So I'm about to have my next cup of coffee with um, James Holly, the CEO of Traction. Thank you, James, for joining me today. Um, it's been a while since we last chatted, about 18 months since the change in brand and the splitting up of the, of the company, Traction, Traction Projects, Leasing and Traction Charleston. How's it going? It's been good. I think it's been a great thing for the company. It's, um, we are 31 years old today. Um, today? At the moment. At the, at the moment. moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Our birthday is sometime in October. But, okay. um, so that's a long time and um, the, the ethos of the company is exactly what it always was, which is, is uh, this huge focus on quality. And that's what we think differentiates us from um, other operators in the market. What we needed to bring into the company was some real new energy. Um, the ability to really amplify our technical offering, which is, is now um, something we can really do with the new Rosden workshops. And we also needed that deep financial capacity that really um, enables our company to grow and us to offer services to the market that, um, that we hadn't been able to offer in the past. Because as we know, rolling stock is extremely expensive and if you're going to grow a railway, you need a lot of financial capacity. Absolutely. How's your facility in Roslyn? It's good. Um, we, we commissioned it on the 25th, 21st of December. Um, okay. Like um, all contractors do, they, had, they got it ready just in time for the December holidays. <laughs> for the first time, we have got locomotives under rebuilds in the workshops at the moment. Oh, um, fantastic. We, we're busy with a, a big fleet upgrade program mm -hmm. over our entire fleet. So. That's about, about 15 locomotives that we're busy upgrading out of our own fleet at the moment. And then we're busy with some third party rebuild programs for some of our customers in the market as well. So the workshop is going to be extremely busy in the next, in the next couple of months. Um, you know, what we try to do there is um, collaborate with as much of the market as we possibly can. Um, so we want to focus on on major maintenance uh, interventions, overhauls, rebuilds, uh, key component rebuilds of um, uh, for mostly GE and EMD technology locomotives. Mm -hmm. um, that's what we've been doing for 30 years. The problem um, that we had in the past is our workshops were really small. Mm -hmm. um, we could only have we only had the capacity to do three locomotives at a time. In the past. Okay. We've now got the capacity to do 15 locomotives at a time. Um, and where we don't have specialist knowledge, um, for example, in a heavy um, traction motor rewind, um, we look to collaborate with the market um, to provide a, a non-stop shop yeah. offering. Um, so we're looking to make it a real services hub. So, and that's where the hub comes in. And so, who have you got part of your hub so far? What are you still looking for? We're looking for um, the first couple of areas where we're really focusing is on, on heavy traction motor rebuilds and on, uh, on a wheel shop. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the first two areas that we're focusing on in terms of bringing people into our workshops. There's, the workshops have a lot more capacity than what we need. Um, mm -hmm. So we are also looking to collaborate with parties that specialize in process work, for example, mm -hmm. uh, for the coach rebuild tenders that are out at the moment. Um, so that we, and we welcome them to come into our workshops. Other OEMs that would like to utilize one or two of the lines in our workshops, we're also open to that. Um, what we've done is, is we've ensured that we will never manufacture locomotives ourselves. Um, we'll never look to manufacture key component parts ourselves. And in so doing, we aren't an IP threat to the vast majority of the market. And that enables us to be and attract a lot of partners into our business, which is exactly what we're after. New projects? Outside of the Roslyn facility, what else are you going to be busy with? One of the nicer projects that we've just picked up is uh, a closed network in the Free State uh, with Anglo Gold Ashanti, Harmony and Village Main Reef. Um, mm -hmm. it's, a closed, it's a large closed network. Um, we, we, we are operating for all three of the miners. Um, we, um, we've worked with Harmony for about 14 years. Um, we've worked with Anglo in their various guises for a long time as well. Um, and it's nice uh, to have Andrew Gold now as a customer. It's nice to have Village Main Reef as a new customer. Um, and to really sort of grow those relationships 
and to see where they can take us. That's a nice operation. It's, it's very similar to some of the operations we've done in the past for, um, for Sabania, for example, where we ran a, a complete system. Um, and, this, and here again, we've taken over the complete system. So we actually acquired the system, uh, okay. the rail network, um, and uh, now we're operating that. It's one of the uh, sort of big opportunities that still exist in, in the region, is where there are these closed networks um, that operate outside of the state networks. And so hopefully we can find some more. You're leasing wagons? We, um, we obviously have our own leasing company ourselves. When we initiate um, new operations, particularly up in Africa, mm -hmm. it takes time to prove those operations. I think um, what um, people don't recognize is how difficult it is to raise debt funding for projects. Um, particularly um, at the moment, there were there have been some tough experiences recently with Rafali Railways and others. The availability of debt is difficult. Okay, we have a very neat example of what can be done. We we are leasing 85 wagons from Transnet Engineering. Um, we found the quality of those wagons to be outstanding, um, and it's a lease to buy. So. Uh, we will be taking up that purchase option over those wagons in the near future. Um, what we needed to do is get the operation up and running. We needed to get the positive cash flows. Off the back of those cash flows, obviously, then you, you attract the funding. Um, we're very lucky in that we have the backing of, of deep financial capacity from our two shareholders, uh, which is the Pan-African Infrastructure Development Fund and uh, from Principal Capital. So with that big equity underpin, it enables us to, to really raise funding. And uh, they have a huge amount of appetite for the rail industry and for these type of assets and these type of investments. So, you know, with, with technical capacity or te technical ability and financial capacity, there's just so much you can do. It's a, yes. it's a really exciting thing that we can take to other parts of the continent. So, where do you see the next opportunity or opportunity in general in Africa? I think in general there's a real opportunity in track. And, and what I mean by that is in the, the slots that are available on the networks in Africa. Mm. If, uh, if there's a rail network on the continent um, and that operator has capacity, let's, take, let's say, to take up three slots mm. per day on the line, and the line has, has capacity for ten slots, yeah. those, those seven slots represent cash and revenue mm. that can be brought to that railway and that government by approaching private operators to bring in their own running stock. And when those operators have 30 years of experience and they have ISO 9000 certification and they have um, safety management systems that have been developed over decades and decades, it means that you've got a safe operator. If you've got a safe operator and you've got um, available slots, well then why not utilize those slots to generate your revenue? And why not use those slots to grow um, the rail industry in your in your area? Um, and we see that as a huge opportunity. Yeah. It's it's uh, it's really exciting that the Department of Transport seems to be going that way. In the um, white paper in South Africa, um, it's great that some of the regional railways are starting to look at that. So that some of the regional governments are starting to look at that. And it's a politically easy decision because you aren't handing your network over to one operator um, that is now responsible for your state infrastructure. You're saying to one operator, you, you come and you run trains under these safety terms and conditions. Um, but you can attract others too, um, which means that it's a much easier decision to take um, with the state still being responsible for the condition of the track. And we think it's a great opportunity Very, and it's really low hanging fruit. Um, so I hope that more of the regional governments start to look at that um, as opposed to the traditional concessioning mm. model which has proven so difficult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you James for taking a moment of coffee with me and I'll see you next at your rival facility. Pleasure. Excited to have you.